Hello students, welcome to the lecture on business correspondence and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Know about different types of letters, understand the essentials of a commercial letter, know what is a bad letter, understand the layout of a business letter. Let us start with what letters are. Letters are a written form of communication. These can be sent or received by individuals or organizations. Written messages in the form of letters can be delivered to the receivers through special messenger, post offices or private couriers. The following points should be remembered while writing letters. Focus on formats. The various formal writing forms have a predetermined, universally accepted format that accompanies them. This format, which is largely based on universal writing conventions, serves to facilitate communication by eliminating miscommunication that may result through random writing styles. Structuring of the content. While writing, one should ensure that the content is well organized with the overview basic details comprising the introduction, all major points with their explanation and exemplification constituting the body and drawing together of the argument, charting out future possibilities in the conclusion. Ensuring connectivity. The content that comprises a piece of writing should reflect fluency and should be connected through a logical flow of thought in order to prevent misinterpretation and catch the attention of the reader. Caution. Care should be taken to ensure that the flow is not brought about through a forced, deliberate use of connectives as this makes the piece extremely uninteresting and artificial. Tempering the content as per the level of formality. The level of formality that is shared between the sender and receiver should define the use of salutations, the vocabulary, the content, the format and even the medium. Steering clear of short forms. People may not be aware of the meaning of various short forms and may thus find it difficult to interpret them. Short forms can at times be culture specific or even organization specific and may thus unnecessarily complicate the communication. Importance of grammar, spelling and punctuation. Improper grammar can at worst cause miscommunication and at least results in unwarranted humor and should be thus avoided. Effective use of punctuations facilitates reading and interpretation and can in rare cases even prevent a completely different meaning which can result in miscommunication from evolving. Sensitivity to the audience. One needs to be aware of and sensitive to the emotions, need and nature of the audience in choosing the vocabulary, content, illustrations, formats and medium of communication as a discomfort in the audience would hamper rather than facilitate communication. Importance of creativity. In order to hold the reader's attention, one needs to infuse creativity to break the tedium of writing and prevent monotony from creeping in. Creativity, however, does not involve only humor or being insensitive to the reader, readers and defines the style of the communicator. Avoiding plagiarism. Any source from which matter has been taken should be acknowledged by providing references or quotes either in the body of the text or at the end through footnotes, a reference list or bibliographical details. Avoiding categorical, opinionated points of view. Paying attention to categorical, opinionated points of view in the context of written communication becomes in fact all the more crucial as it serves as a recorded statement that can be referred to time and again resulting in greater alienation of the audience. Avoiding excessive use of jargon. Excessive use of jargon can put off a reader who may not read further. Awareness of the audience medium. 
the medium needs to be chosen as per its suitability to the audience content. While the content would need tempering as per the medium audience. The business email etiquette basics you need to know. When it comes to your business email communications, you need to make an impression that can lend to the determination that you are a credible professional enterprise and someone that will be easy and a pleasure to do business with. You only have one chance to make that first impression, which will be invaluable to building trust and confidence. Next are the key business email etiquette issues that need to be considered with every commercial email sent. These are the issues business owners, their employees and entrepreneurs need to be aware of in their day-to-day -day online communications to ensure the best possible results. Professional behavior on the job. Know that how you use your email, company email address and employer's technology is a serious issue. Sending non-business related emails, jokes, forwards or chain letters on company time to friends or co-workers reflects on your lack of professionalism. Visiting websites that are questionable or not necessary to your job responsibilities will reflect poorly on your ability to be trusted. Never assume that these activities are not being monitored. While on company time do not assume you have any privacy when using company resources and equipment. Emailing on company time When it comes to email activities while on the job, employees should understand that time on the job should not be spent dilly-dallying at websites, or sending or forwarding non-business related emails to friends or co-workers. Employees should also understand that when on company time there should be no assumption of privacy when it comes to their online activities. It is smart business for any business owner to keep tabs on what their employees are up to on and offline while on company time for productivity, liability and legal reasons alike. In a recent study, 76% of American businesses monitor workers' online activities 65% of employers are using software to block access to certain websites. 55% retain and review email messages. 50% store and review computer files. 26% have fired workers for misuse of the Internet. Subject field. The subject field is the window into your email and can many times determine even if your email will be opened. If this is an initial contact with a customer based on their request through your site or otherwise, be sure to have a short subject that indicates clearly what the topic of the email is. Typos, all caps or all small case can lend to the impression you may be spammer. Typing in all small case or all caps. The subject field should be typed in proper case. All small case makes you look like spammers or that you lack education. All caps look spammy as well, and infers an elevated tone save your emphasis for the content of your email, inputting a cryptic phrase that is not clear about the actual content of the email. Study after study shows that folks look to the subject, field to prioritize their emails and more importantly determine, even if they will open the email nothing but an honest, concise and clear subject, field will do. Level of Formality your business email wardrobe. Informality in business email is like wearing a wrinkled suit, a tie with a stain or an outfit that is too tight or revealing. People notice you but for all the wrong reasons. You know folks who do this in your office or workplace, what is the perception they leave? When you email a new client, associate or partner, if you are too informal not addressing with respect, using proper grammar, sentence structure, spell check, etc. Your inquiry may not be taken as seriously, nor will the perception of what you will be like to work with or do business with be positive one. Addressing How do you address your new contacts? I will suggest initially that you assume the highest level of courtesy, Hello, Mr. Aurora, Dear Ms. Lekka, Dr. John, etc. Until your new contact states, Call me Andy or you can call me Sam. You will also be able to pick up clues on when you can address have a more relaxed tone by how contacts approach you as well as how they sign off. 
Most business people do not mind being called by their first name, however, in a global economy, that can be perceived as taking premature liberties in the relationship if used too soon. Always use Dr., Mr., Ms., Mrs., first name, last name to address people formally. 2. From, CC, BCC, RR, subject, only use CC or carbon copy, when it is important for those you want to know about the contents of the email. Overuse can cause your emails to be ignored. Don't use return receipt on every single email. Doing so is viewed as intrusive, annoying and can be declined by the other side anyway. Include addresses in the to field for those who you would like a response from. Make sure your name is displayed properly in the from field. Never expose your friends or contacts emails address to strangers by listing them all in the to field. Use BCC. Formatting. Refrain from using any formatting in your day-to-day -day business email communications. Unless you would type something in bold crimson letters on business letterhead, don't do it when emailing for commercial gain. With all the spam filtering going on today, the more formatting or embedded images that hire the chance that your email could be blocked as spammy even something as simple as using a different font makes your emails display a contingent upon the recipient having that specific font on their system or a default to their designated default font. Keep in mind the recipient may not have their email program configured in such a way as to display your formatting the way it appears on your system. Emails Attachments When sending large attachments, always zip or compress them before sending. Never send large attachments without notice. Always ask what would be the best time to send them first. Learn how to resample or resize graphics to about 600 pixels in width before attaching them to an email. This will greatly reduce download time. Never open an attachment from someone you don't know. And outgoing. It is better to spread multiple attachments over several emails rather than attaching them all to one email to avoid clogging the pipeline. Make sure the other side has the same software as you before sending attachments or they may not be able to open your attachment. Use PDF files instead. Signature files. Keep your signature files to no more than 5 to 6 lines to avoid being viewed as egocentric. Limit your signature to your website link, company name, and slogan or offer or phone number. Include a link to your website where the recipient can get all your contact information from A to Z, that is what your site is meant for. Do not forget to include HTTP when including your website address within emails and your signature file, to ensure the URL is recognized as a clickable URL, regardless of the user's software or platform. Respond promptly. You should do your best to respond to your business communications as quickly as possible. This is a customer service issue that should not be underestimated. By not responding promptly you appear unorganized, uncaring or worse yet, risk being outperformed by your competitors, who understand the importance of appearing efficient and on the ball. To summarize, when forging new business relationships and solidifying established partnerships, the level of professionalism and courtesy you relay in your business email communications will always gain clients over the competition that may be anemic, uninformed or just plain lazy in this area. When it comes to business, regardless of mode of communication used, professionalism and courtesy never go out of style. Depending upon the communication, there are different kinds of letters, weekly letters, managers that have large groups of employees and who has difficulties in meeting all of them often choose to publish a personally weekly letter. It is sort of a short summary of news with personal reflections. Personal letters. At special occasions, it can be justified to send a personal letter to employees in order to get attention to a specific issue. One example is a letter that summarizes the past year and wishes all the best for the holidays. Business letters. 
A business letter is a correspondence used for the purpose of carrying out a business or it can be called an activity related to writing letters in the business world. It is essential for many business tasks such as inquiries, orders, buying, selling, answering queries, lodging complaints and reminders of payments etc. A well-drafted letter can help develop and expand business along with improving and maintaining relations. Persuasive letters The most common type of persuasive letter is a sales letter addressed to a customer persuading him to company's product. Sales letters are used to sell industrial products such as machinery, consumer durable products and other high value items. Sales letters Sales letters or offers are the most important written form of business communication. Their primary aim is publicity or to reach out a large number of people interested in a particular product, service and turn them into buyers. Planning a business letter is an art in itself and it develops with regular drafting. Here are some points that will help you plan your letter systematically. Previous communication. Read if there is any previous correspondence with the person you are writing to. It will guide you in drafting the new one. Objective. Determine your purpose, whether it is to invite proposals, give information orders, request for payment, quote a prize, calm down an irritated customer or to say no to a request. This will help you write brief, to the point, systematic and focused letter. Know your receiver. Gather a feedback on the reader if this is your first communication with him or her. Depending upon the information, collect and organize your data. Organize information. Collect all relevant details and organize them methodically. Now list these details logically to avoid any doubt and confusion in future. Drafting. Prepare the first draft review, revise and refine it by adding or deleting points. When you are satisfied, write down the final draft which is now ready for typing. Okay, the most important part is that all business letters have a purpose. You must set out the purpose clearly. You must provide additional information to help the reader understand the purpose. Don't start adding unnecessary details or irrelevant information. Try where possible to fit your letter onto one side of paper. Don't go into some fancy sort of style of writing. Write the same way that you speak. Don't use archaic old-fashioned language. Use the same sort of short words and sentences that you do when you speak. Don't go looking for long words because it's written. And use active, not passive verb forms. I do, not it is done. Use aida to make your letter interesting. What does that mean? Well, A means attention. Get your reader's attention. I means interest. Make the reader curious about what you have to say. D means desire. Make your proposal sound interesting and attractive. And the final A means action. Make it clear what action the reader needs to take. That's ADA. Attention, interest, desire, action. That's a very good way to write a business letter. Before you start writing, spend some time getting your thoughts clear. Make sure you put them into a logical sequence. Map it all out. Make a little plan of the letter before you start writing. It's tempting when you start writing to edit things as you go along, but that's really not a good way of doing things. You interrupt your flow, you get lost, and it doesn't sound right. The best thing to do is to write it through and then go back and edit it afterwards. Make sure that when you finish you check your letter for errors. Look for spelling mistakes. Use a spell checker if you can do. Check your punctuation. Above all, get somebody else to read your letter. Somebody else is much more likely to spot mistakes than you are. And above all, remember you are writing to a real person. This is not just some dry academic report or essay. Somebody is going to read this. Make sure that your letter communicates. 
Except for the effective writing part, one needs to keep in mind the format and other technicalities of a letter. Why it is important to use the correct business letter format? Because the way a business letter looks immediately gives the reader their first impression, even before they read it. The quality of the paper, letterhead design, the margins, spacing, and more all have something to say about the organization. A weakness in any of these elements can detract from the effectiveness of the message, even though it may be expertly written. The following explains all the elements in detail. The paper. I recommend using the 20 pound for normal use and 32 pound for important letters like resume cover letters and thank you letters. Color. White is the standard and should usually be used. Light tints, gray, blue, green, etc. are also becoming popular. Size. To me, the A4 and the letter are the only acceptable sizes. There are other sizes, but I don't recommend it unless you are in the creative field or you are trying to capture attention for a sales letter. Layout. In a business letter format, there are many layouts. The three most popular are the semi-blocked, blocked, and full-blocked. In a semi-blocked format, the first line of each paragraph is indented. The rest of the heading, salutation, etc. is left justified. In a blocked format, all text is aligned to the left margin. Paragraphs are not indented. In a full blocked format, all text is justified aligned, paragraphs are not indented. In a justified alignment, the text aligns with both the left and right margins. Whatever layout you wish to use, it does not really matter. As for me, I prefer the full blocked simply because it is easier to type on the computer. Margins Left and right, one inch. Top and bottom, one and a half inch. Spacing most business letters using the correct business letter format are single spaced. Use double space for short letters. Leave one blank line between paragraphs, two blank lines before the complimentary close, and three to four lines for the signature. Envelopes. Make sure the address on your envelope is easy to read so that it does not get tossed in some mail room. Place the address just below the vertical center and just to the right of the horizontal center. Any special instructions such as personal, please forward, or confidential goes on the left side of the envelope below the return address. Place an attention line directly below the company name on an envelope. Make sure the address on the envelope is written so that a postal worker can read it at a glance. When both the street and the post office address are given, the postal service will deliver your letter to the address that appears directly above the zip code. On the envelope address, Type the names of foreign countries all in caps. Spell out all numerical street names from 1 to 10. Use a hyphen between street and residence numbers. Common business letter format elements. 1. Your own address. In most business situations, you will be using your company pre-printed letterhead. If you are using a blank paper, then type out the address. 2. Date lines. Place the date at least two spaces below the letterhead. The line may be flush left or right or centered below the letterhead. Do not abbreviate the month or use ND, ST, or TH with the day numbers, like May 5, 2011. Also, do not use a month's number, like 6 11 Both date orders listed below are appropriate. However, the latter is used mainly by the government, the military, and those outside the United States. December 10, 2010, 10 December 2010. 3. Receiver address. Type the receiver's address in this section. Addressee, address, city, state, zip. Make sure a person's name is spelled correctly. A recipient may decide to ignore a letter that was written by someone who cannot spell his or her name. Do not use both the title and the degree of a person. For example, write either Harry Beaver DDS or Dr. Harry Beaver, and not Dr. Harry Beaver, DDS. Two or more men are addressed as Missers, which means Misters. Do not use first names with this abbreviation. Mr. Smith, White, and Fury. Two or more women are dressed as Madame, Mademoiselle, or Mademoiselles. Do not use first names with these abbreviations. Mademoiselles Barb, Lionel, and Gray. When addressing couples, give both appropriate titles. Dr. and Mrs. Harold Wright, Mr. Harold Wright and Dr. Margaret Wright. 
Doctors Harold and Margaret Wright. Dr. Margaret Wright and Mr. Stephen Jones. Mr. and Mrs. Harvey Adams Quinn. Ms. Margaret Wright and Mr. Stephen Jones. In selecting a title, always notice the way an individual identifies him or herself. For example, some who hold degrees do not use their titles while others do. Some married women prefer Mrs. Others prefer Ms. If you do not know the title the woman prefers, use the standard Ms. or drop the title altogether. Place the inside address at least two lines below the date. Place a person's title after his name unless it is unusually long, then go to the next line. Lex Luthor, comma, President. Lex Luthor, Vice President of International Operations. The comma before the abbreviations Junior and Senior is optional. Ken Griffey, comma, Junior. Ken Griffey, Senior. 4. Salutation. Always use the name of the individual if you know it. Examples. Personal friend or close business associate. Dear Amy. Dear Mrs. Ryder. Dear Miss Spears. Use Ms. if you don't know the marital status or the preference. Dear Ms. Tyler. Dear Mr. Farnham. Dear Dr. Doom. Dear Sir Elton John. If you don't know the name of the individual, address it to the individual's title in the company and then use Dear Sir or Madam. Here is an example. Head of Human Resource, Evil Empire, Inc., 123 Sesame Street. Dear Sir or Madam. But please only use this if you really cannot find out the name of the person. Most companies will tell you who the person is. All it takes is a phone call. It is also quite easy to find this information on LinkedIn these days. If you are addressing to an organization and not an individual, then use the following. Ladies and gentlemen, and if you want to highlight the letter to individuals in the organization, use the attention line as follows. Attention, colon, Miss J. Fonda, CEO, and Mr. M. Jackson, CFO. Ladies and gentlemen, colon. If you are addressing officials, it requires a more formal salutation. See addressing business letters for officials and business letter salutation FAQ in the PDF for more information. 5. Letter body. This is the body of your letter. This is the actual content of your letter. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. The various formal writing forms have a predetermined, universally accepted format that accompanies them. The content that comprises a piece of writing should reflect fluency and should be connected through a logical flow of thought in order to prevent misinterpretation and catch the attention of the reader. A business letter is a correspondence used for the purpose of carrying out a business or it can be called an activity related to writing letters in the business world. The primary aim of sales letters is the publicity or to reach out a large number of people interested in a particular product, service and turn them into buyers.